One night, a man named Cassius Bright brings home a young boy named Joshua Astray, who just tried to murder him and offers the boy a home. A life with him and his daughter Estelle. Five years later, Joshua becomes an integral part of the Bright family. As Joshua and Estelle begin their journey of becoming bracers, Cassius leaves to Erebonia, a neighboring country for an assignment. Joshua and Estelle travel across the Liberal Kingdom, walking the path to becoming senior bracers, while solving major kidnapping cases along the way. However, a secret organization by the name of Ouroboros was pulling the strings behind all these incidents. Using the newly formed Liberal Intelligence Division under the command of Colonel Richard, Ouroboros manipulated him into forming a coup against the royal government by taking advantage of his fear of Liberals' weakness. All in order to obtain the Oriel, a powerful treasure bestowed upon mankind by the goddess Eidos. He takes over the capital of Liberal, Gransel, and makes his way through the Middle Age ruins located underneath the capital to obtain what he thought would be the treasure. However, he instead unknowingly disabled one of the seals locking it away. He was apprehended by Joshua and Estelle shortly after, thus stopping the coup. Afterwards, Joshua and Estelle have realized their deeper feelings for each other, but Joshua was revealed to be an agent of Ouroboros with his memory wiped in order to spy on Cassius. He was unknowingly giving away information to Ouroboros since the day he became a part of the Bright family. Later that night, he tells Estelle about his past as well as the return of his memories. After his confession, Joshua uses a kiss with Estelle to deliver a fast-acting sedative so that she can't follow him when he disappears into the night. Estelle wakes up the next morning and realizes Joshua is missing. Determined to bring him back, she pursues Ouroboros in hopes of crossing paths with him. She learns where Ouroboros' secret research facility is with the help of other bracers and infiltrates it. However, this was a trap set by Weissman, the third anguis of Ouroboros and mastermind behind the incidents in Liberal, which he calls the Gospel Plan. Estelle gets kidnapped, but is rescued by Joshua during his mission to sabotage the Ouroboros flagship, the Glorious. They make their escape and work together to stop Ouroboros' plans, but fail. Weissman disables the last seal, freeing the Liberal Ark containing the Oriel from its prison in another dimension. The Liberal Ark causes a shutdown phenomenon to occur, disabling technology all over Liberal and on the border of Erebonia. Erebonia uses this reason as an attempt to invade Liberal, but Princess Claudia is able to negotiate their way out. Using the zero fuel generator created by Professor Russell, they are able to get Liberal's high-speed airship, the RC, to be unaffected by the shutdown phenomenon, allowing them to travel to Liberal Ark to stop Ouroboros. Upon reaching the Liberal Ark, they progressed to the center pillar axis and defeated all Ouroboros enforcers who attempted to stop them. They make their way deep into the center of the Ark where Wiesman meets them and tells them about how the Oriel can grant any wish and his goal of being leader of mankind. Joshua and Estelle defies and defeats Wiesman who had fused with the Oriel. After his defeat, the Oriel disappears causing the Liberal Ark to fall apart. As Wiesman tries to escape, he is killed by a priest of the Grouse Reader. Kevin. Ouroboros Enforcer Number 0, Campanella, the Fool, takes the Oriole from Wiesman's corpse without Kevin noticing. They all escape, and after the incident, everyone returns to their daily lives with Joshua traveling beyond Liberal to make amends for his sins, and Estelle tagging along. Half a year after the Liber Arc incident, Kevin has returned to performing his duties as a grouse reader, traveling across the continent, collecting artifacts. He receives a call that an artifact was recently found when excavating the remains of the Liber Arc. He goes to Gransel Church, where the artifact was transported to, and is joined on site by a new squire by the name of Reese, who is a childhood acquaintance. As they make their way back after picking up the artifact, they are teleported to a different dimension known as Phantasma. They begin exploring the area, trying to solve the mystery of this place, and figure out how how to return to their world. They find radiant cubes along the way which trapped many allies and they begun freeing them. They were soon met by a mysterious man called Schrotz Ritter, who serves the master of this dimension, the Lord of Phantasma, who informs the group of the many trials ahead. As the group explores, they learn that Phantasma is another world created by the Oriole to help process the wishes of people and is thus shaped and affected by those in it. However, once the Oriole disappeared, it needed a new core and thus copied the stigma from Kevin, resulting in the birth of the Lord of Phantasma. Phantasma transformed into a world meant to punish Kevin, 
as that was his wish due to his tremendous guilt over the death of his mother and adoptive sister. After clearing all the trials, they make their way to the Lord of Phantasma's castle and manage to defeat it. A door is opened back to their world, but with the core destroyed, the world begins to revert to its unstable form. After a moment of reflecting on their growth and experiences together in the Phantasma, they all said their goodbyes and leave as the world crumbles.